The contrast between this grungy, efficient computer factory with its imposing machinery and winding passages and this creative design center feels like two entirely different companies. But both are part of Inwin, an often overlooked computer part manufacturer that's been in business for 38 years now. Everyone reports on new computer parts as they're announced, but the minute we walked past Inwin's inspirational design center on our way to the conference room to cover the new products, we completely derailed the meeting and knew we had to shift focus of our story to the people concepting, hand building, and prototyping the products right next door and cover their environment instead. We'll cover the new stuff as always, like this wood emblazoned mini ITX chassis and these uniquely colored mini ITX and full ATX cases. But this unique opportunity allows us a look at mid-build unreleased concepts like this megalith of a computer case while also learning about an important and untold aspect of the industry. The teams of passionate individuals exploring new and unique ideas and doing their best to bring them from paper sketches to life. And this opportunity for a behind the scenes tour today is one that we're excited about and follows our recent goals of telling stories of the people in the industry and how we get the products we get. This is Inwin's Design Center, and this is the team. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and the CryoSheet Graphene Pads. These CryoSheets are molecularly stacked in the Z-axis to encourage vertical direct thermal transfer from the IHS to the cooler. CryoSheet pads are made to be easily applicable for a thermal interface and completely avoid paste dryout because it's not paste. It makes them particularly useful for lawn service life systems with minimal maintenance. They come in multiple sizes for suitability on the most common laptops and desktop CPUs, and you can learn more at the Thermal Grizzly Cryo Sheets at the link in the description below. We are in the design center for Inwin for some of their more interesting products, and we always we talk about products as they exist on the market all the time, stuff like this, uh, and some of these are still coming out. But what we don't normally get to show is how they're made and how they're concepted. So Inwin has all kinds of cool stuff. They have uh, some laser cut mock-ups we're gonna go over. They additionally have some crazy projects coming up for trade shows and a lot of handmade stuff or custom made things for prototyping and rapid discovery of how they want to go about designing a product. Gives you more of an insight into how things are actually concepted and brought to life as computer hardware. And we really wanted to shoot in the design center here as soon as we saw it, instead of the more traditional sort of conference room shot, because rather than focus only on the products, we got to tell more of the story of how they come to actually get created. So we're gonna walk around a little bit and uh, do a tour of the design center, and then we'll show some of the new things that are coming out, out as well. Like these are coming out at Computex, this is the Dubilee series. Uh, they have the POC or the POC series. There's a new POC 1. They have this massive project on the ground, which this is not, as I understand it, supposed to be for retail, but it's using modular components that Inwin already sells to create basically a chandelier of computers. So we're gonna go over all that. Starting on this side, just as a quick overview of the room. So you can see all of the inspiration for design back here, where they have all different types of art from different uh, movies or features or anime or whatever it may be to inspire design language for what Inwin's working on. And uh, there's a little bit of a story for everything. We're gonna come back to this. This is the new POC 1. Um, this is a POC case as well. But let's hop over to this side. So on this side of the design studio, there's, we actually have a really cool shot of the artist going through some of the drawings. So these are like hand drawings, original concepts for cases and products that eventually came out. Let's jump to, there we go. Some actual hand drawings. The way this works in terms of process is the team lead will come to the team and give a general concept. So they might say something like, we want a series called Mod Free that is going to uh, pursue a more modular approach or something where the user builds their own case and a system. And once the lead gives that concept to the team, the designers and the artists start working together to rapidly concept on paper, traditionally like this. And when we asked why paper rather than say 3D software or something, the answer was pretty simple. It was because it's faster and you get the idea from your head 
onto the sheet right away and then start moving on the more abstract modern form of art through computer software. So this was really cool to see because we don't normally get to see actual drawings and early concepts of cases. And in fact, all around this room, there's stuff just like that. So over here, for example, some of you may remember our coverage at Computex years ago, or CES, where Inwin had the WinBot, which is one of their big, weird, extravagant cases that's just designed to get, get attention from people walking by. Uh, so this is actually a piece from the shipping crate, and the designer works here at this station uh, and has a massive drawing tablet, by the way. This is super nice. I don't know if that's, that's a Wacom tablet. Uh, and so they've got the drawn uh, WinBot on the actual piece of shipping, so you can see kind of how uh, Inwin works not just from a technical capacity and designing specs, coming up with how do we make it hit some price target, how do we do bomb list control and cost control. They also look at the uh, artist side first and coming up with the concept. And there's some really cool stuff over here. So especially these items. This is the first stage of coming up with the product. So uh, we'll come back to this one in a moment. And it's actually got a candle as well. Uh, this is just some laser cut, I think, basically cardboard. I don't know the exact, I think it's just cardboard. But they have these different scale models. I don't know how to refold this, but different scale models of the cases that they make prior to actually going through any kind of more advanced sampling or prototyping. So before getting into, say, uh, potentially 3D printing or into cutting metals to start forming initial panels, they do this, get a feel for the size of the product, where the motherboard tray might be, where the video card compartment might be, power supply location, and go from there. Now, this is another really cool thing. This is actually just supposed to be a souvenir, so I think they're giving these out to some visitors at their Computex booth this year. But you can see it's a, a mini POC case that you can actually build and fold yourself. The whole concept for the POC line of cases is that it ships flat packed. Actually, I think we have, do they take it? Oh, there's one over there. So it ships flat packed and something like this and then you build it yourself, fold the pieces, and if we get a shot of this yellow one right here, you can see how the triangles are bent out, and that's something that the user does as well. So you can get your airflow by bending the triangles in whatever pattern you want, and that's kind of the concept for these. They make them in a lot of different colors, and it gives something a little bit more unique, kind of like we've talked about with Yeston in the past, with the video card design, where it's moving away from more traditional standard, sort of boring but functional ATX or ITX, into something with a bit more character, which I think this room reflects really well. So if Vitaly wants to grab a shot of those two cases with the case monsters on front, we called it the Lego case. That's what this is, except it's got different designs. And we're talking with Inwin about how they might further customize this by working with, say, large IPs and brands and things like that. There's so much here to talk about. Over here, uh, actually, let's move, let's show a product. Let's show something they're actually working on. This is pretty cool too. This is a good reuse of an existing concept. So this is part of the Mod Free series. Mod Free is a modular computer case where you can combine power supply module with a motherboard module for the base of the case and with fan modules and things like that. You buy however many you need and you can construct something like this, for example, in a more traditional layout where you end up with a full tower system got some fan modules here, one, one down here, power supply module, of course. And this power supply module, if we get kind of a close-up here, you can see the shape of it is just this rectangle at the back to contain the power supply. And uh, what Inwin did was take this and then throw some panels on it. So this is the power supply module without the rest of the computer or the power supply. They threw some panels on it and they made this, which is the Mod Free Mini. And uh, this is a new direction Inwin's been trying to go where they're really experimenting with different materials. So this one's mostly steel, but it's got some wood mixed in. You can see the wood paneling here, these bars. And Inwin actually did the wood thing before Fractal did, to my knowledge, several years ago at one of the trade shows. I don't remember if those products ever came to market or not, but we showed them in one of our videos. And this, uh, obviously, if you like the Fractal North, then this is kind of in a similar vein, although I think the argument is yet to be determined on who did it first. 
So this is one of the new things they're actually making. I don't have a price or anything yet, but you've got the idea for it. As for something that's not a product, but it's just really cool, this massive thing. So <laughs> this is um, four full sets of modules. So it's, it's the Mod Free series, and they're building a chandelier. And so we were in here while the team was assembling this earlier. They're doing all the kale management very nicely. It's got full systems, four of them. So there's uh, one here, one here, one here, one here. And it has sets of power supply and fan modules. And they're combining it all. And the center, I think, is mostly going to be used for suspending it from the ceiling of the booth and also getting a bunch of LEDs and lighting and things like that. And actually on that screen next to me here, there is a 3D rendering of their concept for this, which is still coming into creation. And uh, just for perspective, we were filming on Friday before the show. The show officially starts on Tuesday. And I asked Inwin, does it normally come in this tight for the show? Is it, are you normally coming in hot like this? And the answer was yes. It's pretty much always like this. Uh, they started this, first came up with the idea in April. It is currently May 26th. And uh, they've been working on it ever since, trying to get it to fruition. And I mean, you can see it's gigantic. Now, this isn't something they're going to sell. I think what they're trying to show is you can do crazy things like this if you wanted to without custom, necessarily custom making anything, just bolting a bunch of the mod free stuff together as it is. This is some of the new series of cases. Uh, and these actually, some of these drawings were in those art books I was showing a second ago. And this is how they actually came to fruition or finalized those products. It's another one where they're playing around with different materials. So there's leather handle options like expansions you can buy. There's these pillars on the sides, uh, varying heights to get the handle. These, this is aluminum. This is the leather material. Uh, and this is where you can come in as an audience. So we talked to Inwin, and there is a finalized version of this that's a more white and silver color. We have a bunch of B-roll of we can drop in. And then there's these, which are new. And this one, the champagne color, anyone is not sure what the market interest is in this color combination. And I told them there was at least one customer for champagne color products, and it's Jensen Juan at NVIDIA, because he launched a CEO edition, I think it was Titan card in the past, and it was champagne, and that was the whole thing. It also had extra VRAM, so if you want extra VRAM, you had to buy that edition. Uh, but they want to know, do people actually want this set of colors, because to just throw it out there on the market, you have to hit some kind of volume to make it make any sense to manufacture. And uh, so they're really looking for genuine, honest feedback. And I don't think anyone's feelings are gonna hurt if, be hurt if you just say, eh, no, I'm not interested, or yes, I am. So post your comments, upvote each other, and the people from Inwin are gonna read it and see what the interest is. This is a more standard gray coloring. And then this is actually uh, a mod-free case back here, which is, the one we were looking at a second ago, except with panels strapped to it. And it, honestly, it looks really cool. I like the orange and black and white coloring. They've got, kind of hard to show up, but they've got the text here on the sides. It looks almost space capsule-esque in design, kind of like the Orion X. These are the POC or the POC series. They just do a lot of really cool coloring with this. This has been announced in the past to so CES. They're showing some of this stuff. We just haven't gotten a chance to see it in person. Uh, and it's the same type of design, so that's the one that I was showing that ships flat packed. You assemble it, you get a bunch of cool colors. And there's one to the left of our camera right now that's got almost Breath of the Wild coloring for uh, people who want to skate the line of it looks Zelda enough without being IP infringement. So uh, as for the last piece of new product we're going to show that originated in this room, and by the way, we're asking them, how long does it take to get through the process? And the answer was, uh, three months at the fastest to get from concept to prototype to upwards of six months, depending on the complexity of the project and how hard it is to bring it together. Um, so that's, this is the POC 1, not this, this is the previous one. The POC 1 is also flat like this. And so what Inwin's doing, once again, different materials, they've got like woods and leathers and things like that. And the pieces fold and uh, it ships like this. You assemble it and can bend it into the patterns that end up resulting in one of these where there's the wood paneling. Uh, they've still got the protective stuff on there, so you know, looks, looks uh, like it's out of the box, so you don't get to see exactly what it's like. We probably had some feedback on this. 
I did have one critique, which was the air comes in here mm -hmm. and then it pushes the air this way. Mm -hmm. so for video cards that have vertical fin stack like this, they exhaust straight into the panel here and, uh, and straight into a wall on the other side. And then for flow through design, it'll hit a wall here. And so our feedback, and anyone was extremely receptive to this, which is awesome to see, was hey, if you want to do something like this, that's fine. Try to drill some ventilation in here. And uh, on this side behind the card, try to get some ventilation where um, it can escape somehow. So you might have to play around with the motherboard positioning or something. But for those modern flow through designs, same thing on the other side. They were very receptive, which is awesome to see that. Uh, leather straps here for all this, wood handles. And that's the case. So regardless of sort of the products, which are always interesting to look at, and that's the main thing that gets us to visit manufacturers, what we're trying to show lately is more of the story of how do they make the things they make and who are the people that make them. So this room, I just walked around basically the whole thing, you saw all of it. It has nine people who work here about, and that team works closely uh, where it's not any one person's individual project. They work together where, as I said earlier, the direction kind of comes from someone who's got a general concept and a, a market idea, and then the team figures out how do we piece that together from the artist to the mechanical engineers, people doing rapid prototyping, and to the people doing the final product design and management. So really cool design room. It was awesome to see this. I mean, even small stuff like shelves of books and samples uh, and all this kind of stuff. I've got a book there called Detroit Cars, for example. So lots of just random things to give ideas and provide a really creative space. And uh, super cool to be here, very insightful. And check back probably for our factory tour series if you want to see more like this. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us with this kind of coverage because we self-fund all of it. We don't get paid by manufacturers to do these tours. We do the tours because we think they're cool and interesting and our community makes them possible. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.